Ladies and gentlemen, this is R.Y.K., the unparalleled voice in wrestling promo competition, welcoming you to a very merry Blueprint Christmas. It's a holiday tradition here in the Foundation Promo League, and the party started last night. If you caught the fine print, we had some exclusive early matchups, including a new prototype champion being crowned. To get the things kicked off tonight, we start the festivities off with a matchup that started last year and backed by singular demand. We bring to you now the season's beating sequel, Die Harder, Paradioke Style. Let's get to the action. Blueprint Christmas time is here. Drink Dr. Pepper instead of beer. Steel will face utter disgrace, and SNES's fans will cheer. Two wins each, it's tied. But tonight will end it right. In this ring, our clash will sing with pixels shining bright. Pixels fill the air while steel's blowing smoke everywhere. Juggalo thinks he's got this one, but in this ring, he'll be done. Happy Seasons Beating, SNES fans and Foundation. It is time for Seasons Beatings 2, Die Harder, Parody Oki. But, you know, as we end this year in Foundation, there's something I just got to go make right. So, excuse me just a moment. Ah, 
Much better that's off my shoulders. Well, I've been invited to a party downtown. Huh? I think I'll take the shortcut. Let's see, coming over while you... What the hell happened here? Fatality. This is their idea of Christmas. I gotta be here for New Year. Oh, level five was frightful. Bud's nest was unstoppable. Steel's got nowhere left to go. Steel blows, steel blows, steel blows. This is the fifth match we're fighting. The foundation fans all delighting. There's no more rematches to go. Steel blows, steel blows, steel blows. Simon Ness, Ipona Sheikman getting the victory with the Zapper. Could you expect any other conclusion? After that display of violence, we've got to spread goodwill to all. Coming up next, it's the goodwill to all matchup where rivals team up to spread holiday cheer. Let's get to the ring. Big LT and Drew Cole. You two slap nuts are about to get the worst promo ass whooping you ever had to endure. But before that butt whooping commences, I'm a purge. Me and you must handle some real business. Get some things settled between us. Because I know we haven't always seen eye to eye. And we had to fight toe to toe, blow for blow. But I'm letting you know, I'm a purge. I'm putting all that aside. And for one night only. One night only, I'm going to allow you to be the ultimate puppet master that you are. So Jigsaw, come do this little voodoo shit and let Mama Purge be the ultimate puppet master. Tonight, for one night only, I'm going to make you all a Christmas present. Because tonight, Mama Purge is not the master of puppets. Mama Purge! is the ultimate master of puppets. Bow down to your queen. <laughs> Mama Purge, I am at your service. <laughs> yes, you heard him right. There's only one master of puppets, and that's your favorite master. Mama Perch. And you have seen who my puppet is, didn't you? I hope you, Big Erty, and you, Drew Coleman, take a close look. Because that's the only look you will have tonight. You will have no chance. Because you're going to lose this match and your soul. So, Mr. Wallace... Go and get Big LT, will ya? You LT, who the hell do you think you are? Huh? What does LT even stand for? Long tooth? Litty titty? Long titty? Loose tail? Fact of the matter is, you big country backwoods, some of my bitch, probably smell like cow manure while you talk. You don't stand a chance with me and Mama Purge, the ultimate puppet master. I am here to destroy you. I will destroy you. Yes, I've been asking myself, what does Big LT stand for? The big ego, the big lips? Well, <laughs> nobody actually knows, doesn't it? The only thing I know is like he behaves like John Wayne ordered from Wish, but only that. 
I mean, he's a miserable excuse of a promo artist. <laughs> Even Master of Illusion is better than him. So, <laughs> what else can I say about you, Big Katie? Take your horse and gallop out the town. There's no place for you here. And you, Drew Coleman, you sorry excuse of what a man shouldn't be. I could tell you that you're weak, that you're a punk by the shirts that you wear. I mean, look, it's so damn hideous. You get your fashion from Kirk Cousins? You dress like a Midwestern dad and damn it, you don't even have any kids. Did you steal all your mama's Coles coupons to dress yourself with those hideous patterns? Plaid? Huh? Sad. No fashion sense at all and no sense that you way above your weight class in this match with me and my puppet master mama purge so drew what can i say about you i mean you've broken my heart you've broken my trust and all i can say is i will never ever take you back even though you've got those nice blue eyes and the mustache doesn't really suit you it does make you look older but that's about it so I mean, the perch kicked your ass. Tonight, I'm going to kick your ass. So, why did you team up with Big LT? This is a big question I've got in my head. But after tonight, <laughs> I mean, I don't have to ask myself that anymore because you will be not a part of my life anymore. As simple as that. And, Drew, are you wondering why your shirts are shrunk in the wash? Sorry, but not sorry. It's about time you ask your Tinder girl to get you some new shirts, isn't it? And you right, Mama Purge. Drew Coleman never deserved you. He never will again. And how dare I ever forget that a dope film star mustache on his face. It looks like his name was Mama's Boy and all his films were entitled Step Mom Take Step Son. But it should be LT takes part in his face and shoves it up his ass and poof, there goes a mustache. LT, there it is, Mama Purge, loose taint. Because sitting on a porcelain toilet is as good as it's going to be as you will ever sit on top of a throne, LT. Drew Coleman plus LT equals the losing team. So you two clowns there, do you actually thought that you were going to win after this performance from that ultimate team after all? Me and Mr. Wallace, or call us Mr. Mamas. So, actually, what else there's gonna left for me to say? I mean, John Wayne, Tinder Boy, get off your screens because you have just fucked up. Sorry, but it is life, isn't it? I mean, you two are not a promo artist after all, isn't it? I mean, look at Mr. Wallace. He's a great puppet, isn't he? But only for this night. So, ladies and gentlemen, with all that being said, there's only one thing left for me to say. The Mr. Mamas are watching. Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, it's me, it's the big LT on your screen on this super show in this match and I wonder what in the blue hell is management thinking? Doing a good wheel match, putting the big LT and Drew Coleman on the same team? Are you out of your mind? What in the blue hazes do you think you are to put me in a match with him as teammates? I don't want to face Wallace. I don't want to face Mama Perch. I just wanted to whoop Drew's ass. And you, you put me in this match. I don't know what you want from me. BLC, you know you're part of management, right? You, you made this decision, you said yes, you wrote it down, and you didn't do it, I don't know. Maybe you, you kind of forgot there a little bit. It's okay. This is a match to show that bitter rivals can stay together, stick together, and 
make something greater than what we're supposed to be. But hey, <laughs> if not, it just proves how much I know about you, Big LT, that you're just a complete waste of space here anyways. I mean, shit. Mama Purge, how you doing there? And Mr. Wallace are gonna team up and you know how much their rivalry is. I mean, why can't we do the same? Why can't we get more into the spirits of the holidays? What better way? Let's do a song. Maybe a little dance, a little jig. What do you what do you say? A little little eggnog to celebrate this time of year? I do admit. That I I do like Christmas. I, I I need to get in the Christmas spirit. Damn it! I actually agree with you for once. I mean, you know, just pl playing the banjo. Oh, holy night! The stars are brightly shining. Can you sing? Can you sing? Can can you look at Wallace and Mama Purge and just sing really bad about them? Can you do that? Can you get to that lungs and can you do that? Can you be my partner? And you know what? You're probably right, the big LC. I don't think I can really sing. I don't think you can either. I mean, you, you tried and it, it was just complete shit. Uh, how about this? How about we go with what we're thankful for this year? I'll go with a couple ones myself. I know I'm thankful here in the foundation knowing I get to see another match with Mama Purge as she has another grand puppet. I'm pretty sure it won't be Justin or Lamar Wallace or hell, it won't be Jigsaw because we've seen that before. <laughs> I know she's going to do something crazier and grander this time and man, watch yourself. I'm also thankful for seeing the big acting career of one of my favorite re weasels from Who Friend Robbers the Rabbits. Um, Mr. Wallace, you did a good job, man. You carried that bat really well. Just <laughs> don't laugh too much. You, you might kill yourself. I'm thankful for that. What about you there, Big LT? What are you thankful for this year? What am I thankful for? You know, I'm thankful that we're in this match because, you know, our opponents, I mean, obviously, when you look at uh, Mr. Wallace, if you paint him green, and, I mean, he's kind of got a round face for the Grinch. I mean, he is ugly as shit, I tell you what, son. And then Mama Purge, I mean, you know, everybody loves Mama Purge. And, too, I know that she did you wrong and that's wrong because she's been just a little bitch i mean i'm sorry perch fuck you perch i'll tell you what because you know what the whole thing is is that wallace and mama perch together is like a two peas in a pod because to be quite honest i mean they want every damn person in the complete foundation in the promo world to feel sorry for them because they got the special attention Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know Mama Purge is the face of the company. That's why she gets those manicures, pedicures. She gets whatever she wants. Whenever she wants to. It's kind of sad. It gets troublesome and how much statements and bills I get. Now, Mr. Wallace, he don't get the same luxury and pleasures. I mean, he'll get a championship, but lose it real fast because he's not filling up to it or feeling like he's going to half-ass it like he always does. I mean, it sounds like he's... Missouri University. He's that team there that always will beat the best team, but you also lose against the worst team ever. Yes, you are truly right. They are some entitled people, and people still love them, but tonight, unfortunately, they're going to get some call because, you know, I'm the big LT, he's Drew Coleman, and uh, you know, the, the only thing I gotta end this with, cause you know, Merry Christmas Drew, and, and fuck you bitch. I got through the damn match, and now you can go, <sighs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a Happy New Year.
Both teams were able to put their differences aside, but the difference factor was when the master of puppets made Mr. Wallace her personal puppet. Speaking of tag team strokes, we're going to take a quick time out to get a look at one of the new and upcoming tag teams here in the Foundation Promo League. It has been a while since I have been on your screens. Four score and seven promos ago, I last defeated the Purge. And it seems that July 4th is taking place in December this year. You see, I have watched as the tag team division has been let go to the, to the, to the sheep. It's unpatriotic that the tag team division is what it is. And I have searched far and wide. And I have found a tag team partner, unlike none other, in the foundation. And the founding father plans on dominating the tag team division with this sergeant, with this patriot, with this American hero. Together, we will form a team that has not been seen since the likes of World War II. The true patriots of the foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you my tag team partner, Sergeant Havoc. And gentlemen of the foundation, boys and girls, children of all ages, don't adjust your TV sets. Do not, for the older people in the group, do not turn up your hearing aids. You heard what you heard correctly. Myself, Sergeant Havoc, and the Founding Father will be teaming up to take on the Foundation and each and every tag team in it, ultimately for the end goal of becoming the Foundation Tag Team Champions. Because like he said, tag team division has gone to the sheep. The meek and the mediocre have taken over the tag team division here in the foundation. And it is time that true patriots, such as the founding father and myself, stand up for our country, stand up for our promo division, and take control. Bring the true gold back home where it belongs with the most patriotic two individuals in this entire and I mean entire company so I will say this and I will say this now the rest of you in the tag team division and for, hell, for all I care the entire foundation consider yourselves to be on notice if you are a team or have dreams of becoming a team, you will be square in the sights of both myself and the Founding Father at all times. We will be watching. We will be taking you down one by one systematically as we see fit. When it's all said and done, ladies and gentlemen, myself and the Founding Father be at the top of the tag team division so if you're looking for us i suggest you start there sergeant havoc reaching deep into the heart of america and joining forces with the founding father our tag team ranks continue to expand here in the foundation promo league coming up next is a matchup that has been building and brewing since October. Of course, the War Games matchup last month at Reunion was not the end of the story. It will culminate here tonight as Starlin takes on Hollywood Haywood. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness greatness. 
She is an Elimination Chamber winner, a one-time FTW Destiny Champion, a one-time Trinity Champion, a six-time 24-7 Champion, the 2022 Rising Star of the Year, a one-time Women's Champion. And with her partner, the Blueprint, Jackson Aries, one half of the tag team champions known as the It Couple. She is the host of She Talks Wrestling, known to some as Ashlyn J, but we want to introduce to you tonight, the standard Starlin J. What's up, wrestling fam? It's your girl, Ashlyn J, and welcome to another episode of the She... I'm not going to sit here and, and go through all that, because that's not what this is. This is not a special edition of the She Talks Wrestling podcast. I'm not even her. Allow me to give you a proper introduction. My name is the standard, Starlin J. And I was called here because apparently Grandpa Haywood thinks he can beat me on his own. See, Grandpa is having, he's having a moment. He's been on his period for weeks now. He thought that that win over She Talks Wrestling Team at Reunion, he thought he did his big one with that. I did my big one. I be her. Good golly, Miss Molly. No, that's not what this is. That's not what this is at all. You went and got four, four people from a totally different place, brought them here, and you drove a car. You did nothing. In this battle, I'm sure you'll have your Christmas outfit on, you'll have your hat to cover up the baldness on your head, and you'll be loud and screaming and hollering at everybody. I don't have to do that. Matter of fact, it is Christmas time, so let's do something Christmassy. This is my edition of Joy to the World. Are you ready? Okay. Joy to the world, it's Blueprint Christmas. And Hayward is still a bomb. He had to go and get BWO. He has no faith in us. I hate this for you guys. Blueprint Hayward is a really big fraud. Hayward is a fraud. Hayward really went and got four dudes to do his dirty work. He couldn't even get the radio station right. And you think that you're gonna come during my holiday. Do you not realize, Haywood? My birthday is right around Christmas. I am a Christmas baby. And you think whatever you're gonna do is gonna beat me? I'm pretty sure um, Bones wrote your whole script. And I'm sure that you said to him, is this okay? Oh my gosh, is this okay? Please tell me it's okay. I hope it's fine. And unfortunately for you, Hayward, that is not the case. I really hope that you dig down deep and do some soul searching. And I hope that this is a lesson taught to you for me. My grown up Christmas list is that you grow up and get your life in order. Learn how to do things all by yourself. And Stop letting people like Bones and Trevor do all your dirty work because your time's up. So Blueprint Foundation, I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas and an even better new year. Signed, The Standard, Styla J. Legends are told, some turn to dust or to gold, but you will remember me. Yeah. Remember me for centuries. Let's go. Just wanna stay is all it will take. We'll go down in history. Remember me for centuries. Foundation, welcome to a very 
Mary Blueprint Christmas and Hollywood Haywood versus the Starlin' J of She Talks Wrestling. And I am so sorry that I didn't get the job completely done at War Games. I am so sorry that I have brought her back on your screen tonight. Because let's be honest, this is Hollywood Haywood's favorite time of the year. But you, Starlin, you have become like the fruitcake of this holiday season. You go along with the holiday season. Everybody knows you're supposed to be here, but nobody really likes you. Nobody really wants to take a bite of that juicy fruitcake called Starlin J. And I tried to get rid of you at Thanksgiving so the foundation would have so much to be thankful for. But you kept coming back because you think in your mind that I'm the senile one. You think that I'm the old one. And yes, I am 41 years young. But here's the thing. I can run circles around half this roster. I got more information in my head than you can forget in a day. And let me explain to you something, Starlin' J. No one buys into the fact that I'm some grandpa here. As a matter of fact, when they watch you talk, you're more like the grandmother. Talking all slow, trying to collect your thoughts. Meanwhile, I'm articulated. I'm calculated. And I'm way more damn entertaining than you could ever hope to be. You see, you tried to pitch your wagon to the horse that is the foundation so that we could help She Talks Wrestling. And I appreciate every damn thing you did for this place. But let's be honest, we're not the problem. We're not the problem with She Talks Wrestling. No. You're the problem with She Talks Wrestling. You're the problem with your own podcast. And there's nothing that I can do to save it. I can't save She Talks Wrestling for you. Do you know why? Because I can't fix you. I can't make fruitcake taste better. I can't take an immature person and turn them into an adult. I just can't do it. I can do a lot of things in the promo verse. I can be a belt collector. I can win championships, but I can't elevate you. And maybe that makes me a failure. I don't know. But I do know this. I do know that after this match, win or lose, I'm still going to be Hollywood Haywood. Everybody's still going to talk about me. Everybody's still going to talk about the foundation. But after this match, the only thing that they'll be saying about She Talks Wrestling is why in the hell did Hollywood Haywood waste his time with one of the matches on the card against Starling J when he could have taken on anybody else on the roster. So for that, I think the word that I'm looking for is you're welcome. You see, I'm not feeling very jolly. I don't got a lot of good gollies for you because I tried everything I could to help you. And in my time of need, you shit on me. You shit on me bad. You said I was lazy. You said I was senile. You said I was old. Well, now here's your wake up call. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And you won't make it to the damn new year. Your winner, Hollywood Haywood. Starlin J bringing the fight that she had, but Hollywood Haywood able to pull it off in the end. And coming up to our next encounter, you may recall when Dante Black was able to defeat his rival, Jason Ridian, and take away an opportunity to the Blueprint Championship. That match happens here now as the Blueprint Champion Vagabond defends against the number one contender, Dante Black. Ladies and gentlemen of Foundation, no one expected me to be in this spot. No one expected me to go out there 
on Blueprint and do exactly what I said I was going to do. To look in the eyes of Beholder and take what he held most prized to him, to steal his moment of getting to the top of that mountain. And now I'm here facing Vagabond, the Blueprint Champion, who's been on a high streak of never-ending dominance. You see, last time we faced, I took a visit to your little shadow realm and introduced you to my own. To play off your own words, to say I was playing around and not taking that match serious would be an understatement because that was nothing but fun to me. To see where the dice would end up rolling, congratulations, they ended up on your side. Everything was playing for your cards for the playing field. Well, you see, you used exactly what I knew you were going to do, and it's what you're going to use tonight. At the Merry Blueprint Christmas, where you're thinking Christmas is coming early, and you get to celebrate with your family during the holidays, but that title will cross your waist will allow me to be the Grinch to ruin your dreams, to deliver nothing but coal and disappointment in your stockings. Because you see, you look into someone's eyes that call themselves a demon, or the Baba Yaga, or the devil, or an Oni, whatever word you can describe from the dictionary to make you seem intimidating. It all depends on what someone sees, what you put into sight of what is in front of you, vagabond. You think you're the only Baba Yaga because you choose to be that is only destined to you and that you're chosen to walk around this earth as the one and only true devil of the foundation, the one that causes nightmares, the one that feasts on everyone's fears and doubts and climbs into their souls to eat away slowly like a digestive parasite eating away at flesh. As everyone rots away in decay. You see, anyone can be the Baba Yaga if they choose to. And tonight, Vagabond, let's just say you're going to be looking in front of a mirror. Because the Baba Yaga is here to truly test what your capabilities are. You see the Shadow Realm that you say you only control, Vagabond, that you run rampant in doing whatever chaos you choose to do can only fall under the power of the rule of the mighty Vagabazy. That you're the only one that can placate in your own realm of existence to live in, to torture those pure souls, to burn down those churches, to have your victims laying in a casket. What do you do when someone can do exactly what you say with no fear, with no consequences of any statue that come to my brain? That only one vicious cycle runs through this mind once that bell rings that is ending you in your reign. So exactly how pathetic you truly are. That you and these mirages and illusions that you create, anyone can be that. You see, those games that you play in with someone's mind of fear just don't work this time. And your only option is going to be Vagabond. It's fading to black. When the NGO takes your head straight clean off your shoulders, where nobody gets out. Alive. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is I, the devil, Green, the Baba Yaga, the Vagabond. It's truly not a blueprint Christmas without your current ring defending blueprint champion, the different Green, the Baba Yaga, the Vagabond. It's not Devil May Cry 1, it's not Devil May Cry 2. But it's Devil May Cry 3, because Dante, this is your third chance. You are now facing me in Dante Must Die mode. 
Because Dad, if you remember our history together, each and every time a dog walks you. In WGP, I've stopped you from my having time. In the Foundation, I've stopped you here too. In a non-title match yet. I mean, it was just it was just me being petty because I wanted to show you what real darkness was and I showed you. And what do you think is gonna happen here, Dante? Do you think you're gonna win here? Are you gonna have an awakening like Dante from Devil May Cry? Are you finally gonna get one on Virgil? Because I'm pretty much Virgil now. I'm that dark cloud hanging over your head. I have that dark voice in the back of your mind, in the deepest, darkest recesses of your mind that haunts you. I am the very thing that keeps you up at night. I am the very thing that haunts your dreams. Every moment of peace that you have, I am there. I am there to ruin it. You know this to be true. This is the most sinister narrative that I can think of. <laughs> because Dante, you're not ready for this. You're not ready for the responsibility of carrying a blueprint division. You're not ready for the responsibility of being a blueprint champion. Because you're not blueprint made. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think for a single solitary second that you stand a chance. Do you want to know why? Dante, because you have a habit of repeating yourself. You always start with, it's going to be a war. It's going to be a war of attrition. Yes, we know. Get to the point. That's your problem. You take forever to get to the freaking point. You take forever to get to the final talking points. How are you going to break down your opponent? Well, I can do it so effortlessly and so viciously because I'm cold blooded ruthless, I'm calculating, I know what pieces need to be moved, I know when the Rubik's cube needs to be switched over, I know when the puzzle needs to be flipped, I know when the script needs to be flipped, you Dante, you haven't got a clue of what that is, because each and every time, I've done what you, had my boots on and everything, had the leash around your neck, dragging you all across the verse, so tell me, what are you going to do different here, I've studied you, how are you going to beat me? Hmm? Come on, Dante. What do you got for me? Because if it's the same as it was before, it's just not going to work, bro. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall all over yourself. Because these repeated patterns, everybody is stuck in the notes, aren't they? You know this to be true. It hurts you on the inside. It's going to hurt you here. Eventually, it's gonna hurt you everywhere else. Because Dante, you ain't got that dog in you. You ain't vicious. You ain't ruthless. You ain't cold blooded. You ain't calculated. What do you think happened to Sam Spade when he got up here? He got comfortable. He got complacent. He got lazy. Why do you think he lost to me? I had him figured out. Why do you think you're gonna lose to me? I have you figured out. Every single day of the week, I own you. Every month, I own you. This right here, it's not coming home with you. Because this is not going to be your awakening. You're not going to have no devil trigger. Nothing. All you're going to do here is lose Dante. Consider this Devil May Cry 3 over. Dante Black bringing it all the way, but the enigmatic one, the Vagabond, able to retain his Blueprint Championship tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're preparing for our next matchup, but it appears that that Buckshot has stormed the ring. Can we can we go to this, please?
this is some sort of fucking sick joke, isn't it? I should be in the Blueprint Championship right here tonight at a very Blueprint Christmas. But I'm not, am I? See, Santa Claus has not come early for me, no. Because the system has told me, nah, 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 nah. Boxshot doesn't deserve it. Boxshot doesn't deserve his Christmas present of being Blueprint Champion. Am I wrong? Of course I'm not fucking wrong. I am never wrong when it comes to here. I am never wrong when it comes to the damn foundation and it comes to the Blueprint Championship. When I first came back here, I told you that I wanted the Blueprint Championship, whether it killed me or not. And this is me telling you that I am putting my stake in the fucking ground. I'm putting my flag in the ground and telling you that you need to give me that Blueprint Championship. Because that title belongs to me. Because the system literally made it for me. That's why they've been dragging me down. That's why Hunter Matthews have been dragging me down. That's why Hollywood Hayward, Drew Coleman, fucking Big LT, all of you motherfuckers have been dragging me down. And I'm so sick and tired of it. I'm so sick of people going, Boxshot doesn't deserve this. Boxshot doesn't deserve that. Bullshit. I deserve everything that is coming to me. I deserve everything that should be mine. So stop dragging me through the fucking mud. Because I will refuse. And I will absolutely refuse to compete in the foundation until I get what I want. Until I get what I want, you can no longer have your top star in Boxshot. In the foundation. Until I get what I want, until I get the Blueprint Championship match that I deserve, you can consider me MIA. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Buckshot putting the brunt of his anger toward Hunter Matthews, and he's made his intentions very clear. He wants the Blueprint title. Stay tuned to Foundation Programming and our social media pages for all the latest information with this saga. Coming up next, folks, it's going to be a special holiday-themed matchup to crown a number one contender for the Prototype Championship. We introduce you now to the five Golden Rings Gauntlet match, a series of one-minute matches with a single judge, and I see he's making his way here now. Well, hello everybody out there in Foundation Land. This is A-List Alverson settling up with a nice mug of Disserono eggnog. And I'm going to sit back with y'all and watch the five Golden Rings gauntlet match and guide you all the way through. So get your drink ready. Let's see some action. TK3. Now I only have a short period of time to say this, but you see, I haven't won gold here yet. And I'm ready to win that fucking gold. So TK3, I hope you're ready for a fight. I hope you're ready for a battle because I'm not going down without a big fight. I am going to get through this five gold rings match. And I'm going to move on to face the next person after I kick your motherfucking ass. So I hope you're goddamn ready. Because if you're not, well... I guess this was an easy one already, right or wrong. Mmm, tis the season indeed. And as we prepare for some holiday festivities, Tyler Stone, I want you to realize that of these five golden rings, you're made of nothing but fool's gold. You see, you're amongst the crop of competitors that you don't belong in, especially when you're up against me, TK3. I've been chosen for a greater purpose, and that purpose is to beat you and to move on to bigger and better things. But hey, I don't want to compromise being on the nice list, especially when I'm going up against a lump of coal such as yourself, so... After tonight, when I beat you in the first of these matches, I really hope that you learn to sleep in heavenly peace because good lord you could definitely use some heavenly peace what is going on with this situation it's looking a little rough around the edges that's not even a face a mother could love merry christmas everybody happy holidays i'll see you soon whoo boy tyler stone comes out short and to the point but to a fault I can see the grittiness, I can see that he's menacing, but I don't get any sense of holiday out of what he's doing, and I don't think he really focused on the prize. Now, TK3, by contrast, 
He's got the snow falling. His attitude is in the right place. I hate him, and I want to see it again. TK3 is moving on to the next round. TK3. At first, you are a high school student. And right now, you are brain water wannabe. Why TK3? Why are you trying to be like Bray Wallace so badly? It's me, Nils, you blow lights. It's me, Nils, you not come for the dark. It's me, Nils, you not a real Bray Wallace. TK3, this is not a Halloween no more, youngster. This is Christmas season. It's me, Nils, in this ring, youngster. I'm going to beat you up. I will beat you up and you'll be eliminated. Bye bye. Silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Oh, oh gosh, you startled me there, AEP. Then again, looking, oh man, that is a haunting situation you have going on there. You're not so much looking like AEP these days, more like EDP, but. Let's talk about mind games for a second. You call yourself the king of mind games, the master of mind games. Well, my friend, my brain is like a steel trap. Once you get in, you can't get out. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. You can't play your games with me, AEP. Because you see, you're all, you're all presentation, but no content. You're all sizzle, but no steak. You have all these special effects, but when you cut right down to it, I can't understand a word you say sometimes, because you speak in this low, sensual whisper. My friend, I'm glad that you're a rather big tub of gingerbread dough because uh, I just steamrolled right over you and flattened you to make some sweet homemade gingerbread cookies for Christmas. Happy holidays. Woo! So TK3 picks up right where he left off. He is extra annoying. He is extra boastful. He is way too overconfident. And then AEP comes in. He's dark. He's menacing. He's trying to do the things thematically that he's supposed to do. But when it comes down to it, I still think that TK3 has embodied what's at stake and he's made me hate him enough to want to see somebody else give him what he deserves. Who's going to do it? Ho, 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 TK3. See, it's the most wonderful time of the year. But instead of holiday greetings and gay happy meetings where friends come to call, the only thing that you're going to be getting is a good swerve ass kicking that's going to ruin your Christmas. See, I've already made my list and checked it twice, and it shows that you're the next man in line to have to get his ass kicked to get to my tile shot. But don't worry, once I hit you with the jingle bell rock and hit you square in the silver bells, you're going to have yourself a silent night in the ring against me because everybody's going to give you the cold shoulder just like Frosty the Snowman. But don't worry. Once they see how bad you get defeated in this match, they're not going to say that Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Instead, they're going to say that TK3 got ran over by Dash fucking Mars. Gold! Runs through my veins, Dash Mars. I have a history, a love affair with gold. It's why I am one of the five golden rings. What do you have running through your veins? What makes your legacy, other than having the stupidest name I've ever heard of in my entire life? Not only that, how stupid do you have to be to step in the ring with me? I've been on a roll so far in this match. I've gotten this far, and I'm not turning back now. You see, Dash Mars... I see, I know I am a man of many words, but when the time comes and the, the moment really matters, those words become fewer because all it takes is a few words for the world to listen and for the world to get behind you and for the world to believe and for the world to shut everyone else off and rally behind me. Because, oh, joy to the world, the Lord has come and he has come to kick your ass seven ways till Christmas Day. Ooh! Man, that TK3, he's hitting the same points. 
He knows what has worked for him, and he's continuing with what brought him to the dance. I'm starting to get a little tired of it, but he is pushing harder and harder. Dash Mars takes the unique approach and tries really hard to go in the parameters of what we do. Very good creatively. Presentation-wise, I think he didn't put it over the top. And that's where TK3 has had it far and away throughout this whole match so far. There's only one guy left. There's only one match to go. Let's see who takes it. Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirred, not even a mouse. And the stockings were hung by the chimney with care, with hope that St. Trent would soon be here. See, he trampled not one, not two, not three, but four different men before getting to me. And although St. Trent reigned supreme in his test, the Iceman sat idly so unimpressed. Because St. Trick receives all of this glory, when St. Trick can't even tell a coherent story. He spends all his time just ranting and raving. Like, do we even know what the fuck is white raving? He lacks any emotion. He lacks any pressure. His promos are basic. He looks prepubescent. And in all of this talk, and he realized the lesson, I've beat Trick before, and I'll do it a second. And while the fireside is blazing bright, and we're caroling through the night, all the people are shouting and filled with glee because the Iceman reigns supreme, yelling, next, body, please. Bobby Miller, you are a long ways away from home. This ain't the BWO. This is the foundation. You're staring right down the barrel of a loaded gun because I have not come this far to let someone like you stand in my way. You call yourself the Iceman. Tonight the Iceman don't cometh because I'm a supernova of talent. I'm ready to explode into the mainstream. I am ready to win this match. I will annihilate you where you stand. Welcome to Sweep City Population TK3. I know you're coming in all suave, coming in with all your experience saying, Baby, it's cold outside. But let's get something straight here. The only person making any bag today is me. Happy holidays to me and me alone. And I want you to take your bag, put your ball inside it, and go home. Because tonight, your winner of the five golden rings is TK3. Woo, Foundation, I tell you, this is the one that we waited for. This is the one that was worth the money. Bobby Miller comes out a house of fire. TK3 standing his ground, doing his best defense, but I think he's even getting tired of his own act. And when Bobby Miller comes in with a fresh tank of gas, TK3, Trent, baby, I love you. You done well, but it's over. Your winner of the five Golden Rings Gauntlet and number one contender for the Prototype Championship, Mr. Bobby Miller. Give him a round. This one's on me. A special congratulations to the Iceman, Bobby Miller. He will be challenging the Chosen's Uriel, the new Prototype Champion, at next month's Super Show, Destiny. As we transition into the next matchup... Foundation Promo League. Your champions are not safe. I am coming. I am already here. Get ready. <laughs> I don't know what all that was about. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I was saying before uh, that just happened, uh, last month at Reunion, we had a matchup between El Wapo and Elijah McFly, where Mr. McFly got the victory, and many consider an upset. I've been very distracted by this, this individual that just said, I... Anyway, coming up next, we run it back. It's the big rematch between Elijah McFly and El Wapo coming up next on Foundation's Very Merry Blueprint Christmas. What was that?
was the night before Blueprint Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even this fucking mouse. You see, McFly, you sat here. Radio silent. You sat here, not saying a damn word. Because you are afraid of what's to come. See, I understand the situation you're in. I understand the simple fact that you're not as golden as you say you are. I understand the fact that you cannot spew more than one time on the screen without repeating yourself over and over and over. But you see, the things that got you ahead of me by two points, a W by two points, was because you had said nothing but lies. You had said to everybody that I tucked my tail between my legs and I ran off. You know that's not true. You also tell everybody about my accolades and you had said stuff that wasn't even true. You're telling me that I'm not successful here. You were saying that I wasn't a champion here. You don't want to do your research. I tell you to do your homework so you don't look like a goddamn idiot. But you know what? You did it to yourself. You know, I came out here to try to help you. I came out here to give you a helping hand. But you tell me that you're not going to take my hand because you think that you are better than me. Yeah, I wanted this second shot to show you and everybody the kind of person that you are, the kind of opponent that you can be, that your same exact rebuttal is going to be the same thing you had told me last time we faced each other because you got nothing against me. You got nothing to say. It's because of you. I'm not even in a co-main event, not even in an opening match. Hell, not even in a main event. See, I'm not used to that. I'm not used to being put in the middle of the freaking card because of somebody that I'm with. You should thank your lucky stars that you're even on the main card. Because you are not main event material. You're not even mid-card status. You know, we don't want to see your ugly face on the screen more than we have to. But you need to understand that you're in a damn match with a former blueprint champion. Where's your championship gold? Where's everywhere you've been? I don't see anything. All I see is somebody who's been beat, battered, and bruised everywhere he went. All I seen was somebody that took a fall no matter where he went. But that's okay. You can be the person that takes a beating every damn time you go out there. But I'm going to be the one to give the beating each and every time we go out here. And tonight's going to be no different. Tonight I'm going to show you and the world that you are nothing but garbage. That you are nothing but low beneath me. You don't want to take my advice? Well, fine. You go ahead and you go in the realm of being irrelevant. You go in the realm of not being nobody that's ever going to amount to shit and feel sorry for yourself for the rest of your goddamn career because I tell you one thing right now. You think just because you win by two misery points that that makes you better than me, McFly? You got another thing coming because if it wasn't for people like me, you wouldn't have a fucking pot to piss in. And let me tell you this, we all know, we all know for a fact that you're going to sit here and make shit up. But let me tell you something that's true, McFly. You're a nobody. You will always be a nobody. The only success you have is being in tag team because you had somebody, and I'm not going to name names, carry you. <laughs> and that's the only time you even had tag team goals. And that's not even here. I don't even think you even touch gold here. See, it seems to me that you're allergic to winning. But see, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you where I think you belong. And I'm going to give you a hint. You belong not here on the main card. But you belong on the pre-show. On the lovely, fine, print. Happy holidays, you prick. You're bad Cause they are the voices in your head It's a beautiful moment, isn't it, Wapo? It's Merry Blueprint Christmas The most festive time of the year 
especially for the foundation. You're gonna get your little revenge. Right, Rappo? You're gonna you're gonna cross that line. You're gonna mark off on the checkbook. Elijah McFly, sure. That one ain't nice. Let's mark off naughty because we all know Elijah McFly on the naughty list. <laughs> Because my name is El Wapo, and I'm a former world champion. Take my hand, Elijah McFly, and I will lead you to greatness. You think I can't see the fakeness within your words, Wapo? You think I can't smell the BS? Coming from your lips? I can see it through your eyes, Wapo. Through your glasses. Through your thick skin. I can see the lies within you. You want to tell me you want me to be along you. You want the dark horse to be with El Wapo, I shall not accommodate, I shall not align myself with the most biggest loser of this entire promo universe. I'm not just talking about the foundation, I'm talking about the promo universe as a whole Wapo. You, compared to me, are a joke. You are a more joke than what I am. From what I was before to now, you are still the same and you will never change your ways. You are a fake. You are a bona fide liar, El Wapo. No one can trust you. I don't trust you. I don't believe in El Wapo to begin with because I don't need to believe in the biggest loser and the biggest person that deserves to be on the naughty list. What you're going to get on Mary the Blueprint Christmas is your greatest present of them all. And that is the most biggest loss that you ever had. A bigger loss. Then at the reunion. Cause you say I got lucky. But I didn't get lucky. I proved to you single handedly. Within four minutes time. I proved to you. That you mean absolutely nothing. Nothing to this world. You should have walked away. You should have stayed away. Cause nobody cared. Nobody was excited the moment that you graced the screens again. So Wapo, Merry Blueprint Christmas. Because at the same result, what happened at the reunion is going to repeat itself. I dare you to even think that you can get a victory over me. Because the moment you have that thought, I'm just gonna shatter your dream. Wapo avenging last month's loss and getting the victory over Elijah McFly here tonight. Folks, last month we saw the chosen team of Jason Ridian and the Conscriptor become the new Foundation Tag Team Champions. Tonight, they make a defense against the newly formed tag team of Truly Righteous Soul Star and AJ Storm, known as Soul Storm. Let's get you to the action. See, after our first successful bounty hunt, we could collected that payment. 
We collected that paper. We collected that bread. We collected the opportunity to go against the Foundation Tag Team Champions. Hayden and the Constrictor. Now, I'm sitting here trying to figure out, Soul Star, is he trying to be a constrictor? Are you trying to write scripture? And really, it's funny how everybody doubts me because of what I've done in the past. Well, guess what? Stop living in the past. This is now the future. We are the then. We are the now. We are the forever. And we are the future. And I'm so happy we finally got talent that we can actually go against that might be able to protect their neck and grit their teeth and maybe just maybe if they're feeling a little lucky maybe they could walk out not on stretchers not an ambulance but let's make this thing one thing straight you are not walking out with those tag team championships that is not happening and that is a fact you have a big bounty on your head and we perform better when there's big bounties than there are when there's little bounties see this is not just an easy pushover match this is gonna be violent this is gonna be brutal and i cannot wait for it sean by god almighty aj yes it is time for the brutality time for the ruthless aggression as we take on the Chosen, but they're gonna find out real quick that we are the true Chosen Ones. That's why our second matchup is for your World Tag Team titles. See, me and AJ, we're in the ass kicking business, which is serious business, unlike the two of you numbskulls who like to, I don't know, lollygag around. Because all we have here, folks, is a wannabe 99 cent Adam Sandler and Kevin James. We got, hey, get stripped in. Hurry, we gotta cut our man promo, man. Hold on, hold on, man. I gotta make a sissy. Gotta make a sissy. Hey, get stripped in. See, see this beard, man, is moving, man. In the wind, man, in the wind. And then, when they realize that their jokes can only get them so far, and that we have the last laugh, we become the World Tag Team Champions, they're gonna be like, oh, that's bullshit. Because we are better. We are in the ass kickers of this business and those tag team titles are gonna wrap around our ways because we're not funny we don't try to be funny we're just here to whoop y'all's ass and they continue this tag you're it and the real funny thing is it doesn't matter if you're an army of one <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're creative, it doesn't matter if you have energy or charisma. All that matters is at the end of the night, we are going to hurt you so bad that we can drag you to where you can see the starlight fading. Those tag team championships slipping from your beaten, degraded bodies. It's no joke. This isn't playtime. This is adult business. And well, tonight, we might, we might handle things like adults, but we've gotten strict orders to shoot to kill. And I could bring out my 45s, put two bullet holes right there in between your pretty little eyes. And that'll be it. That'll be all she wrote. It'll be all the other 2.0. Only it'll be a one man wrecking crew and Hayden. Now Hayden, I could sit here and talk a lot about you, but I don't know enough about you. So I'm gonna let Soul Star finish you off. Now, Constrictor. I'm so happy you didn't call yourself the Constrictor. Cause there's no way in hell you would be able to squeeze body, my breath out of my body. Let's wrap this thing up. It's funny, AJ. These two think they're going to walk out with those titles? Nah, son. But as the saying goes, y'all can shit in one hand and wish in another and see which one fills up fast. A lot of times y'all realize that that shit just fills up a lot faster than that wish. But you see, me and AJ stormed to get to where our day because we wished upon a star. We did so because he proved night in and night out while we are the workhorses. But you got Jason and Conscriptor. The chosen one. No, all you are is lackluster, lazy, half ass complacent. The great pretenders, the placeholders for the true chosen ones. 
the new World Tag Team Champions. Because unlike you, we never miss the mark. And just like tonight, we hit you in that mark right between the eyes. And you're laid out on the ground, your broken, bloody, battered, bruised bodies. Looking up with those Christmas cream eyes because they're glazed over. You're looking up at the stars and you realize what just happened. You didn't just lose your tag title, but you got your ass handed to you big time by the bounty hunter. The southern ass kicker and ass kicker from Southern California who just whooped y'all's asses. And if you don't like what we said tonight, or the fact that we beat you with your titles just like that, they call the 1-800-FIF department at our station. Oh, that's right. They got a bad case and not picking up. Ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your screens. The Chosen are here. Without the tag team title belts. Man, talk about popping that energy balloon. I'm sorry, but it just feels weird to defend the tag team titles without actually having the title belts. I'm told they're coming. That's what she said. <laughs> Y'all liked that joke, didn't you? We should talk to Haywood. Hey, Haywood, we want our belts. You might as well just ship them straight to us. You know what? I'm not waiting. You know, I am going to represent and defend this. Because you all know we aren't losing to Soul Storm. Soul Storm. Man, I do not get this tag team division at all. It seems like they can just find any random pairing, put them together, and call them the top contenders to the tag team titles. I guess even Hogan faced jobbers. Now that's not very respectful of our opponents. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. You are the light, the cheery side of what it is we're doing here. And what exactly are we doing? We are getting ready to rip Soulstorm's intestines out of their mouth. Now, Jason, you're a godly man. Why don't you tell the truly righteous Soul Star why he has no chance tonight? Soul Star, when I joined the Foundation four months ago, it seemed like a pairing of you and me made sense on paper. But the thing is, you went with partner after partner after partner trying to capture the tag team titles and me on my first match being chosen, challenging for the tag team titles, I was actually successful. I accomplished what you could not. Are you sure you're not evil, Jason? Because you certainly spit fire. As kind as that is, I speak the truth and nothing is more powerful than the truth. Speaking of truth, I believe it's my turn. The truth shall set you free. Now, Tyler, why don't you tell us about A.J. Storm? A.J. Storm, I don't like you, I have never liked you, and I have never once seen you as my equal. You are the wish version and poor man's Austin Wilde. The fact that we continue to allow you to come back here absolutely perplexes me because you don't deserve to be here. This is the upper echelon of the promo world and you fall short every single time. I can't even think of one thing that you have done in your career that is even remotely noteworthy. It almost sounds like he should have stayed gone. Some people never learn. You know, I think what upsets me most is that they honestly believe they deserved a tag team championship match. I don't get it because they don't deserve a tag team championship match. Hell, they've been a team for less than three weeks. AJ Storm, truly righteous soul star. Don't forget that I know where you guys come from. You come from a world where the booker picks the winner, regardless of how good the promos actually were. And that's why you guys struggle everywhere else in the promo verse because when it's legit and judged you guys do not pass the test now jason why don't you go ahead 
and finish these assholes off. So, sir, you know, us facing you is just embarrassing. No, me and my partner, the conscriptor, we defeated Tag. And now we're facing Soulstorm? Seriously, it's just like two wannabe never wases found each other. They call themselves bounty hunters, and now they are the number one contender to the tag team titles. Really? How does that make sense? You better cherish this opportunity, because it's not coming again. But before we go tonight, why don't we let the people in on our plan as tag team champions? We don't plan on letting go of these tag team titles. We plan on being the greatest tag team the Foundation has ever seen. But we understand that there's another team out there that claims they're the greatest tag team in promo wrestling. Bobby Miller, Beast Mode Bones, the PUA Tag Team Champions. Consider this a challenge and something that has never been done before. Starting point three, you keep holding your tag titles and we will do the same. And we are going to start the whole goddamn... And we start the whole gosh darn show on night one. You two versus the chosen tag team unification match. Do your jobs. Hold on to those belts and we'll continue to do ours. And apologies in advance to anyone that gets in our way between now and starting point 2024. Because we will cut you down. It's not personal. It's strictly business. <laughs>
And maybe that was the time you want to talk about where you had a rough time. You didn't see me as quality entertainment, quality promo. So you just decided to leave. But then you want to take everybody on a journey and disappear from promo land because you got things happening in your life that makes a very bad story to tell. And what a Cinderella story for you to come back and then all of a sudden I'm the champion. You've done a great job. And now tonight, it's time for me to take my rightful place as Foundation World Champion. Because what have you done? What have you done, Young Gun, to prove yourself as champion? Sure, you beat Wallace by talking. You beat Sess because you had help. You beat DB Greatness because you had a better story to tell. But what happens when you face somebody like me that has everything to do with the entire package? The edits, the music, the speech, the words, the story. Tell me, Young Gun, do you understand what it means to be the very best to be at the very top no you don't because just like you got that title just three months ago you're fixing to damn lose it because the master of illusion has put on his big boy pants his big boy cape with the base paint tonight is your night to hand me that title because you know when you're in my presence when you're at the grandest stage of them all my stage not starting point whenever you're in the ring with me it is always the grandest stage you think just because you had a bad time for a couple months doesn't mean that everybody else has went through shit because i remember that i have let people take things take title opportunities pass me by why because i am the damn foundation of this place i have waited and secluded myself and done what i'm supposed to do backstage and in front of the camera even if I'm sick. And it literally had to put me up in the hospital for weeks to get me away from the foundation. I have been dedicated. And tonight, tonight is the night where the young gun falls and the master of illusion will rise. And you want to know why? It is because I am chosen. That's right. I am chosen for such a time as this. Such a time as this. And tonight, the golden promise begins to be fulfilled when I put that championship on my shoulder. Target acquired Young Gun. You see, the thing about it is, the thing about an illusion is I don't wait to count to one, two. Excuse me for my silence, but tonight is going to get a little personal, and trust me, I know I've been personal during my journey here in Foundation, but it's not in me to be a bitch. But before I get started, my name is the motherfucking Young Gun, and I am the last shooter left in promo wrestling today, and I am your Foundation World Champion. And tonight... I find myself a little bit pissed off because I feel as though I always have to go down one of these roads and, and with you it's, it's a little bit different because you're coasting on some bullshit and I know it's bullshit and you know in your heart of hearts it's bullshit but you keep talking shit about it like you're actually better than me and I'm tired of hearing it I'm tired of hearing it I've been stewing on you for months now and Luke I got you 
You got off on that bullshit in WGP six months ago, but you know, and I know, you ain't ready for me. This ain't the same young gun you saw then. You thought you can get your little pot shots in and talk shit on the way that I do this, but in reality, you know and I know I am the realest motherfucker in promo wrestling today. I don't call myself the last shooter for no reason, because I actually shoot, I actually talk my shit, and I can back my shit up with receipts. And you, Luke, you coasting off that little petty shit and cheap pops. Thinking that shit was cool, Slim. Thinking that you're better. But here's the difference between you and me. I am authentic. The motherfucking young gun is one of one. I stand on business. You see, you thought you can do this better than me? Motherfucker, I am the blueprint. I was the first prototype. And I carry the foundation I've been doing it I told y'all motherfuckers When I got on top I wasn't letting go And this bitch ass motherfucker Think he could come in here With his shitty lore effects And his deeper voice And get one over No bitch This is mine I'm tired of reiterating it Because this shit is mine no one is ever knocking me off the top and not you who the fuck you think you is your style can't touch mine i'm graceful on the feet bitch you can't do this the way i do this and you think your big break is coming tonight well i got a news flash yo ass is just an illusion motherfucker you're fake you're not real you're a fucking facade and I see you and my people see through you too Because at the end of the day I am the last shooter in promo wrestling And I am your foundation world champion And bitch, you can never do this the way I do this Target, set Young Gun Stephen Faison with yet another successful title defense. And that wraps up the action here at a very merry Blueprint Christmas. The only thing left to do is give you this special holiday message from the foundation owner, Hollywood Haywood. Mr. Haywood, please. I give you our next super show in January where someone will change their destiny. Destiny, destiny. Fulfilling my destiny, yeah. I talk to God like what's next for me. I'm just fulfilling my destiny. Destiny, 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 destiny. I'm just fulfilling my destiny. Yeah. I told y'all I'm a psycho. And don't tell him what I might do. Yeah. Al put his hands around my throat. So I cut him off. That's what you give a stepping on my toes. At the top of the key, that's a nice hole. My career about to take off flight mode. You don't like where we're headed, what you sitting on my flight for, huh? Yeah, they said wait until your time comes. Nope, time's up. You put in the album, got you thinking it's your birthday. Woo! Yeah, I'm full of surprises. A lot of pressure on the record, so you know I'm making diamonds. Tell me how would you define this? You witnessing the finest. Yeah, you never know what you can do until you try it. Yeah. I've been working late nights like a letterman. He ain't working anymore, but forget it then. Somebody get the sedatives. Too late, yeah, the light bulb's off in my head again. Where is Edison from my adrenaline? Washing through my veins like it's never did. Fuck it, it's the body, man, if you ain't got the head with it. Since a kid, I've been a pessimist. I like to focus on the negatives. Oh, Lord. I talk to God like what's next for me. I'm just fulfilling my destiny. Yeah, my pops told me he was proud. I don't think he knew what that meant to me. Yeah, you try to take advantage of me. Before you die, you'll be dead to me. Before you die, you'll be dead to me. Laugh when they question me. Y'all ain't no threat to me. Yeah. I'm just fulfilling my destiny. I'm just fulfilling my destiny. To the death of me. Thank you for another successful, very blueprint Christmas. As we get ready to go on our holiday break, I would like to personally thank each and every one of you 
for participating in the foundation. And I would like to wish you and all of your families a happy holiday. Mm-hmm.